Hello all. Broad expanses throughout the United States are currently affected by two significant factors. A worsening drought, which we will discuss in detail, and an outbreak of beetles. A specific worm species has begun assaulting the roots of corn crops, creating significant difficulties in several regions of the U.S. We'll delve into these topics and more. Welcome to Finance Daily, where we'll discuss the agricultural sector because these changes will inevitably affect the contents of your grocery shelves in the coming 6 to 12 months. The United States is presently battling a significant drought crisis, which is dramatically affecting its agricultural sector. As of mid-June 2023, drought conditions have damaged 57% of the nation's corn production and 51% of its soybeans. These statistics represent a noticeable increase from the previous week's figures, which were 45% and 39% respectively. Sorghum and winter wheat, other important crops, are not exempt, with drought affecting 64% and 50% of their respective yields. The drought's effects are becoming more evident in the Corn Belt, a critical region for agriculture in the United States. States such as Iowa and Illinois are witnessing notable increases in moderate and severe drought categories. Despite the U.S. Drought Monitor reporting only slight changes on a national level, a more thorough analysis of the data reveals a contrasting image of worsening conditions in the Midwest. Interestingly, conditions have somewhat improved in states like Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, the escalating scope of the drought across the Corn Belt suggests an increasing threat to crops from dry conditions. As an illustration, Illinois has experienced a significant 13.5 point increase in the severe drought category, with nearly 15% of the state currently enduring harsh drought conditions. Similarly, the land area in Iowa impacted by severe drought has risen from around 8% to slightly more than 14% within a single week. Brad Rippey, a USDA meteorologist, highlights that vast sections of the Midwest have seen a one to three category degradation in drought conditions over the previous month. Severe drought is also extending east of the Mississippi River. In the Western Corn Belt, there is a confluence of short-term and long-term drought problems, complemented by areas of extreme to exceptional drought. The ongoing drought is identified as a cool drought. Modern crop strains tend to perform better in dry periods compared to excessively hot conditions. In certain regions of the eastern Corn Belt, subsoil moisture levels remain adequate, assuming crop roots can tap into this moisture. However, in the western Corn Belt, subsoil moisture content has dropped, which makes timely rainfall essential for preserving crop health. Looking ahead, the seasonal drought monitor forecasts either additional development or continuation of drought across the eastern Corn Belt. The NOAA's latest drought outlook aligns with this prediction, suggesting the drought will persist across eastern Missouri, eastern Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. On a more optimistic note, conditions are projected to improve in the western Corn Belt and Plains regions. As you hear these names, it's crucial to acknowledge that these states represent the very pillars of the United States agricultural sector. Currently, these states are grappling with a rather unfortunate incident, the failure of the spring-winter wheat crop. This has had a considerable impact on the farming communities of these areas, a knock-on effect of the less-than-favorable weather conditions that have persisted. Simultaneously, farmers are now entering the sowing phase of other staple crops, corn, wheat, and soybeans. However, the weather continues to show its unpredictable side with reports predicting less than ideal conditions for the growth of these crops. A whopping 54% of the continental United States is grappling with extreme dry conditions, or worse. The drying spell has forced farmers into making tough decisions about the future of their crops. Soon, we'll get a more precise overview of the situation, thanks to the USDA's report about the acreage sown with corn, soybeans, and wheat. This will shed light on the drought's potential impact on overall crop yields. But it's safe to say that less sown land generally equates to fewer crops, irrespective of the prevailing conditions. The predictions made by the USDA regarding crop health have taken a hit, dropping by 5% across the country within just one week. This isn't restricted to just one crop, but applies to all mainstays. Corn, wheat, and soybeans have all suffered a 5% decline within the span of seven days. The state of Illinois is facing a particularly bleak scenario, recording a severe 19% drop. Indiana isn't far behind, 
with a 10% decline, followed by Missouri, which has seen a decrease of 9% in the same duration. If these parched conditions persist, we could potentially be looking at a sizable reduction in crop yields this year. This comes at a time when supplies of wheat, corn, and soybeans are already strained. A simple glance at the vegetable oil aisle at Walmart will corroborate this fact. There's a conspicuous shortage of corn oil and soybean oil. This has led to a shortage in soybean-based products, including common items like margarine. The supply chain impact of this agricultural crisis is starting to be felt even at the consumer level. Additionally, we're grappling with a beetle issue. These rootworms metamorphose into beetles over time, and their increasing ability to resist pyramided BT trait packages, a widespread pest management technique in corn agriculture, is causing considerable alarm among agronomists and entomologists. This burgeoning resistance is predominantly observed in locations where corn is grown continuously, including regions of Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Nebraska. The gravity of this problem came to the fore when the Corn Rootworm IPM Regional Working Group, an amalgamation of university, industry, and government personnel from the U.S. and Canada, noted a large number of beetles in their monitored fields. The escalating population of these species in the aforementioned areas is presumably attributable to their growing capacity to resist BT corn. Interestingly, the severity of this problem varies regionally. For instance, farmers in DeKalb County would concur that corn rootworm is a substantial issue, while their counterparts in Champaign County may not express similar concern. Regardless of current experiences, experts are cautioning all farmers to remain on high alert. Ken Ferry, a well-experienced agronomist, encourages farmers to perform root digs and assess feeding, emphasizing that a single root node's severe pruning can lead to a yield loss of up to 15%. This concern extends beyond just rootworms. Southern states' northward moving windstorms have transported numerous black cutworm moths into the Midwest. These pests are a major menace to corn farmers who have cover crops, high residue, or early season weed pressure. In such instances, the University of Missouri Extension suggests using a rescue insecticide treatment for BCW when 2% to 4% of corn seedlings in a field have been cut below ground level, and or when 6% to 8% of plants are being fed on or cut above ground. Another pest causing trepidation is the true armyworm. These larvae, known for their voracious feeding habits, can rapidly overrun a cornfield. Intervention is suggested when damage is seen in 10% or more of plants and when the larvae are less than three quarters in length. However, farmers are warned not to solely rely on corn with BT traits for adequate protection against true armyworms, as they differ from rootworms. Therefore, U.S. farmers face multiple challenges, drought, rootworms, high fertilizer prices, and other supply chain issues. Further complicating the matter is the foreign purchase of farmland, particularly by the Chinese and corporations like BlackRock, who then choose to grow trees instead of food. This has led to a reduction in food availability. Amidst this, we also have to contend with increasing disruptions in Eastern Europe due to political unrest, putting the grain deal at risk. Thus, despite our belief in an endless food supply, we are witnessing the complete opposite— China is amassing food resources while geopolitical tensions rise, indicating that our food security might be more fragile than we've previously assumed. Thank you for watching this important update on the current agricultural crisis in the United States. At Finance Daily, we believe it's crucial to stay informed about the challenges affecting our food supply and take action to ensure a secure future.